right, so this is the story of getting accommodated for emergency evacuations at SUNY Purchase fall of 2018. So I came to campus on August 24th and I had my first accommodations meeting on like August 30th, I think, um, where I like saw in writing all of the accommodations, housing, and academic that I would be receiving this year. This was after I submitted necessary disability documentation paperwork and had all my ducks in a row. And I had this like very long meeting with two people at the disability resources office to figure out like exactly what my accommodations looked like on paper. In those accommodations, it said um, emergency evacuation accommodation, like I was approved for that accommodation but it was never specified and I kind of inquired but they were vague so I just assumed that it was like what it was at my previous school Emerson where like a police officer would come and get me from the higher floor if I couldn't get down the steps. First couple of alarms happen, I'm walking and it's clear it's not an emergency so I just go down the steps. Then more um, alarms happen where I can't go down the steps. And so I, I wait in my floor and there was one in particular that I wasn't sure if it was a drill or not. So there was like one that I was really expecting someone to show up. Nobody shows up. I noticed there are these like other students in the building who have like mobility impairments and are also like presumably waiting for people to come and get them. So I'm not the only one who had a reason to believe that was the protocol. So then following this, I follow up with my like accommodations coordinator and she says via email that it's in another email what the exact protocol is. So I like search my inbox and um, it says that that is the protocol, like someone will come and get me. No one came and get me. Do I need to do something to make this happen if it's in like, vague writing over here and she's like um no you're on a list that notifies police that you're in this building okay cool um meanwhile these communications are taking a while there's like several days in between each communication and more alarms are going off more drills are happening and in one of those drills I find my RA and she's like, do you have a plan to get out? And I'm like, no, can you talk to the RD? So she's like, yeah, I'll talk to the RD and let you know. I never hear back about that from the residence director or the RA. So I just continue with the Office of Disability Resources because again, that's where my accommodation is on file. The pieces are getting confusing. I'm like continuing to communicate with ODR and she says that it's not her office that coordinates this, it's like the Office of Community Engagement, and I should take it up with the RD, who is like the immediate community engagement person in my building. Like, finally, this is like just last week, so we're, we're at the beginning of October now. I email the RD thinking that he's gonna be the one to have like concrete information about what to expect and I'm kind of surprised that the university police have not been looped in at this point if they are the ones picking me up. The RD says to talk to the RA who is talking to him to get me specifics. So like it's very clear that like literally no one has any idea what's happening. It should be noted that in one of these drills I kind of communed with other disabled students who are waiting in the building they were like yeah we have no idea what's going on either we don't know if this is a drill either like we're all shit out of luck if this were an emergency and nobody came meanwhile all of the communication that i'm getting from odr and the rd is like you just have to be proactive and you just have to talk to these people and if you talk to these people and have on paper that you're disabled then like you'll get the accommodation that you need but here i am like emailing everybody and nothing is happening i'm not gonna continue like being calm or nice about this and i call um office of disability resources to get an appointment with my contact at ODR, Lauren, who I tried to make a meeting with over email just for reference, but she had insisted I could only do it through phone. So she says, call me, I call, I get a receptionist who tells me that the person I need to speak to is yet another separate party named Anthony Ware, who is like a higher up of community engagement in the similar office 
as ODR. I just want to speak to Lauren, who's been my main contact, and the, the person that I'm speaking to is being really kind of pushy, like saying, like, you just have to talk to this other person, like, I don't even have to schedule a, me a meeting, and I was like, no, at this point, like, I would like to make a complaint with ODR because it's not okay that I don't have this information, and this has now been going on for over a month. So I get the, the meeting, and I, at this point, haven't received all the responses from the RD, so I don't go ahead and make a meeting with Anthony Ware because I don't have all the information from the last party that I spoke to. And at this point, I've had however many meetings, however many emails, and I don't want to spend more time on this issue until I know that someone else is going to respond with actual answers. This week, I spent like chunks of time during the day, and still people were just sending me to other offices saying, well, they'll deal with it because that's not our problem. Meanwhile, literally at any point, like an emergency could happen, my life would be in danger because how, like this is my chair, like how am I supposed to get out of the building in an emergency with like hundreds of able-bodied college students going down the steps and don't have the ability to navigate that in an emergency, which again has been on file since the day I got here based on a documented disability and previous accommodations at another institution. So, then today, I go and I meet with Anthony Ware just by chance because I have to meet with him about something else. And he just happens to say, are you the one who has been asking around about emergency evacs because like we got your complaint essentially. And also like I think some friends of mine who are able-bodied emailed the Office of Disability Resources on their own saying, hey, we've seen that like disabled students are not getting the time of day in emergency evacuations and there's a lot of confusion. Finally, like since the issue was getting some attention by students, I think they felt some pressure to respond before someone took like legal action. So I just happened to be in this guy's office, really nice guy, and he says to me, you know, are you the one? And I say, you know, yes I am. Thank you for knowing it and, and bringing it up to you at the moment. And we start talking and he says, point blank, like we were not prepared for this. His reasoning was like there are more disabled students in this building than ever before and we didn't have a solid plan in place so what the protocol is drumroll please is that i call university police once i'm at the stairwell during a drill to alert them that in the case of a real emergency um fire personnel will then be notified and then a firefighter will come up and carry me away. But how long is it going to take for all of those pieces to be connected? I could be burnt to a crisp but by the time that happened. Um, and when I said this, the response was like, yes, well, it's imperfect. Um, but that's what we got. And we're still working out kinks to that. In like two weeks, I'm going to fill out like an agreement that outlines all of these steps so that I know explicitly that it's my responsibility to call university police, which none of the residents in the building knew um, that we had to call police or that police could even be called in this situation. Like we thought they were already aware and on their way. So I meet with the RD finally um, to, to like sign this agreement that outlines things that says like, yes, I understand I have to do this, but they're still getting the agreement together. So we're looking at like, end of October before anything is in writing that this is the protocol and this is what's expected of us and for the students who you know haven't been in and in everybody's ears about this and and having these extra meetings and these extra emails about it they don't know that these policy improvements are right around the corner so I don't know what the other kids are doing but nobody knows that there's been movement on this like, nobody told me they were working on this until I was like up in everybody's faces you know if anyone is ever going to call me an aggressive woman again that's fine because this is a perfect example of when I was really freaking aggressive and it mattered because it might sound dramatic but an emergency could happen at any time and could definitely happen you know within the next two weeks they said you know like we acknowledge that we like fell behind but this isn't good enough because again we're looking at mid to late October I've been here since the end of August that's almost two months and they say like well this is the first time we had this many students in the building you put us there when a disabled student applies for housing and needs like an accessible room 
housing, which is community engagement, this office that this update came from, assigns our housing and puts us there and has us on a list that we live there. So they're saying, well, we're unprepared for so many students in wheelchairs to live in the same building. That was your decision. You made that happen. Like, I'm just living where I was told to live and where I have a room. Um, and like, you knew that we all had disabilities because we all had the paperwork in order like way before a fire alarm was ever a question, the audacity of what I am experiencing is infuriating, but in a weird way, like it took so long that I'm just happy that I came to an understanding rather of kind of what to expect and what is expected of me amidst this like huge and exhausting saga and that's kind of how the system of accommodations in institutions like higher education and the the tendencies of, of ableism to arise will just sort of like squeeze everything out of you i you know don't have it in me to make complaints retrospectively about this beyond this video because i got my answers and i've spent enough time on this and now i know what to do and presumably i'm like as safe as can be i don't have the time to like keep on fighting when like it took this much to just get to my own individual resolution i don't have a whole lot for like the the wider population of marginalized people left in me when i'm being hard on myself about like activism and involvement so we'll see how this this pans out because of uh you know the flaw in how long it will take for all of those parties to connect to come and get me and i guess i did my work um, something that is worth noting here though too is that when I pointed out that there are so many more steps um, expected of me in terms of responsibility for this like finding these answers and calling UPD and having a cell phone to do that and the ability to communicate on the phone calmly um, that are not expected of able-bodied students who can just leave the building the answer was like well every student able-bodied or disabled has a responsibility to get themselves out of the building. That's not an okay comparison and that's offensive because um, able-bodied people have a privilege where they can just walk out the building, whereas there's all these extra steps that I am expected to be happy to go through um, simply because I happen to use a wheelchair, which again was not a choice, nor was this like long, long, long process. There was this weird like half accountability of like we realized we could be doing it better to like this is just the way things are like, no this is not just the way things are you could have endangered a lot a lot of of students because there is proportionally a high population of students with physical disabilities on campus so to say like eh, we didn't get our ducks in a row like we're gonna do better next month is like not not enough for me when like you knew I was disabled and living in housing since day one. I um, have a lot of experience advocating for myself. I have a lot of experience with these hoops. I have a lot of experience um, with, with college educational institutions um, comparatively because I am a transfer student. I have the ability to communicate and form my own thought cohesively and coherently, which you know, some people with disabilities don't have all of those things. So I am, for all intents and purposes, like the best equipped to get through this situation. And it still took over a month and counting because we'll see if it's successful. Thanks for listening. I did it. And now I am going to go celebrate with a nap.